glad I finally got this thing together. I need to eventually print it out in high quality with a 3D printer so I can actually like move it. In other news, I finished third grade math. Chris Lucas, I'm catching up to you about 50% through fourth grade math, which is the same as one half, which is the same as one divided by two. Yay, fractions. And what else is new? Oh, tomorrow is a big day. Tomorrow I'm going with my friend John to Skid Row to volunteer uh, to tutor math um, at the Midnight Mission. They help homeless people with um, housing and counseling and education and job training. I don't know if I'm qualified to help other people learn arithmetic, but I can at least help them get to halfway through fourth grade. <laughs> I started reading this book, Strength in Numbers. He says that about two out of every three better paying jobs require mathematics beyond arithmetic. I want one of those jobs one day. And I want to help other people get those jobs. Mostly I'm hoping that by helping other people I will be helping myself. Based on the first three pages, I really like this book so far. You and I, all of us, can explore the inner and outer worlds far more than we imagine possible. Many of us close the doors too soon. I dedicate this book to all who are willing to open closed doors and open even wider the doors already open. Just sounds like this book was just written for me. I love this. Each of us can reach a higher level than we imagine if we are willing to explore the world and ourselves. I hope that this book will help people explore and feel at home in the world of mathematics. Ah, I love that books like this exist and I want to find more of them. In fact, I want to read every book like this that exists. I want to know about every single person out there who is trying to do this to help others feel more at home in the world of math and get interested in it and to not close doors, not just doors to math, but doors to any subject that they're afraid of. I've never been able to choose, you know, my one passion the way some people ask, well, what's your dream job? What do you want to do with your life? And I've never had an answer to that question, but I guess in a really broad sense, that is my passion, opening doors and exploring what what gives people the courage to open doors. I've also completely fallen in love with this book, Loving and Hating Mathematics, a team of a, a mathematician and a psychologist duo who wrote this book together. And I love how they start the book by talking about myths in math. The first part they say, quote, this is on page two, the myth that mathematicians are different from other people lacking emotional complexity. Or other stereotypes like they just sit in a room all day alone and just, you know, think about numbers all day and that's all they like to do and they don't like to socialize and they have no social skills or they're crazy. You know, it's strange. If anything, it's almost as if I was a bit disappointed when I met somebody in real life who seemed perfectly normal, maybe even less strange and less crazy than me, and it turns out that they're a mathematician, and I was kind of maybe hoping that they would have been completely crazy. But that's just not the case. The second myth they talk about in loving and hating mathematics is, quote, the notion that mathematics is a solitary pursuit feeding back into the other stereotype that mathematicians are people who just stay alone locked in a room all day not true at all. Like when I interviewed Henry Sagerman the other day, he talked about how he loves to collaborate with other mathematicians. Mathematics is not any more a solitary pursuit than being a writer or any kind of artist or a musician for that matter. The third of our four, four myths is often stated as a quote from G.H. Hardy, that mathematics is a young man's game. A young man's game. Definitely women are not that well represented in mathematics, and that's something that I'm curious about. It's something you hear a lot more about in the realm of technology these days. And as far as youth goes, and this is a myth that I've subscribed to, I guess, that because I didn't start really, really young, I have no hope of getting anywhere with it. That I, you know, there's no sense in me like ever going to grad school in something technical or, you know, scientific or mathematical because I'm just too old to start. And that's not true at all, of course. And they, in this book, they say that they talk about a lot of mathematicians over the age of 50 and many over the age of 70 who are still very productive in their fields. And that's very encouraging. Not sure what the literature out there says, if there are any studies about, you know, 
starting in mathematics at a later age, but anyway, something to read about more later. And the last myth that they talk about is, quote, the notion that mathematics is an effective filter for higher education. Being bad at math and certainly being bad at arithmetic and computation does not mean that you're not smart. And that's a myth that I suppose I've wondered about myself too, that maybe it means I'm not smart, that it doesn't come naturally to me. And I'm trying to fight that, but a little part of me, I guess, kind of, kind of still, still believes it. But I'm making progress and getting over that. So lots of books, 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 lots of good books to read. I need to uh, fix up my my wall of questions, which is continuing to crumble, but that's okay. Oh, I wrote down a bunch of more questions, but they're just going to be on my website for now. I'll write them up in physical form later. And, uh, you know, organization and logistics and blah, 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 blah. I think that's all I wanted to say. It's late and I've been working all day on this other non-math related work and I went to this holiday lunch thing today and saw a bunch of my ex-co-workers and my ex-boss. It was nice to see them again but, but a bit weird. It hasn't been that long since I quit my job but it feels like a whole other life. Very strange. And then on top of that I ended up feeling really sick to my stomach afterwards so once again the day did not go according to plan but it almost never does. That's okay. That's life. It's been a long time since I've talked about my larger plans and non-math things in the rest of my life right now, and I really want to take a year off before I start a regular full-time job. I can't think of... I don't want to travel. I don't want to go backpacking across Europe. I can't think of anything better than to spend the year reading books going to the library, interviewing more people. What career do I really want to pursue next? Because I don't know. Wouldn't it be so cool if I could just keep doing what I'm doing now and like pick 12 topics and spend a month on each of them? Music theory and composition and meeting lots of musicians and interviewing them too and, and finding parallels between music and math, of course, and and visual arts, uh, the, the fundamentals of design and graphic design and photography and filmmaking and animation and how to draw, how to paint, writing and science and more math. Computer science, of course. Oh, and physics. Yes, physics, chemistry, history, biology, classic literature, I don't know, everything. <laughs> I get really excited when I think about the even tiniest possibility of actually giving myself permission to do that. I don't think my parents approve of the idea and I will have to have a talk with them about it if I decide I really want to do it. I really want to do it. Is that so terrible? I wrote about this on my blog a bit before but I haven't talked about it out loud yet that I, I'm really getting sick of this daily video Thing. A few people have commented that my videos have gotten better over time. That's probably more because I'm just spending more time making them and that means that I am spending much less time doing things like socializing and so I'm falling behind on my goal to make more real-life friends and running Learn to Code LA, the meetup group that I founded earlier this year. That's been on the back burner for a while and I really want to do some more with that and I have a couple of... I'm giving a couple of talks early next year and I really need to prepare for that and I really want that to be a bigger part of my life again so that I don't feel weird when I'm talking about it in front of people. I started this daily video blog thing back in October as a crutch. So I've been doing this for pretty soon, it'll, it'll be 75 days in a row. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't quit until I quit for the right reasons. I wanted to make sure that I didn't stop out of fear. I wanted to make sure that I only let myself stop if I know that the reason is because I'm stopping to, to better achieve my goals. And I think I'm at that point. It's getting easier. I am feeling much more confident. I have no doubt in my mind anymore that I can actually make a video every single day. I have no doubt. I know without question before I go to bed every night I will finish and publish a video. And I made a commitment to go until day 100, so that's what I'll do, but I'm ready to stop. And I'm not going to stop making videos, no! I want to make lots more videos, I just want to have a little more breathing room, a little more balance in my life, and a little more time to spend. For example, anytime I write a script, I only get to use the first draft. I would love to have time to do more than a first draft, do some editing, do some iterating, 
some more polish, have some more time to think about how to present the ideas I want to present, how to tell the stories that I want to tell. In January, after I get to day 100, I'll drop down to maybe three times a week. That's, uh, that's where I'm at right now, aside from the math. And as far as math goes, yeah, I'm really excited about tutoring tomorrow. Uh, this will be the first time I've ever tried to tutor somebody. Anyway, whew, I've been rambling a lot longer than I thought. So, mm, we'll see how much I edit this down. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll see you all tomorrow.